Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Today is the ninth Sunday after Trinity, and whether you are watching with us on Sunday morning or if you're catching up with us later on in the week, it is wonderful to welcome you to our online service of worship for this week. A few things to share before we begin. As many of you will know, all three of our church buildings are open again for worship on a Sunday morning. So if you want to, you can join us on a Sunday morning in person at 9.30 at the Emmanuel Church Centre, at 10.45 at St Mary's in Hawkshaw, or you could join us at 11 o'clock at Emmanuel in Holcombe. Uh, if you do decide, to join us in person, do head over to our website, just here. On there, you will find a section called COVID-19 resources, which will give you all the latest on what we've done to make our buildings as COVID secure as possible. And you can download one of our what to expect leaflets, which will tell you about some of the changes that we've had to make to how our buildings are laid out and all of that kind of thing. Later on this week, on Wednesday evening at 7.30, there is our Zoom with a Brew meeting. If you would like to pop along to that, do drop an email to this address just here. And later on this week, we will send out the links to you all. For this morning, well this morning, our summer series continues. If you have been with us for the past few weeks, then you will no doubt know by now that because of lockdown and all that kind of thing, while we've not been able to have our usual holiday club, we have been working our way through the book of Daniel in the Old Testament. And to help us, well, each week we've had our puppet friends to explain the story to us. This week, well, our puppet friends are back and today, Today there is a message that only Daniel can understand. We look forward to finding out more. Also on our YouTube channel after the service today, there will be another one of our craft videos to go alongside our service for this morning. Do check that out afterwards. And if you would like to get your hands on one of our craft packs, there is still time. Do check out one of our craft videos and you'll find the addresses on there to uh, drop your details too. This morning, as we come before God, let's pause for a moment to settle ourselves into God's presence and then we'll pray together. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praise with gratitude and to listen to your word with eagerness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first song for this morning is You're the Word of God the Father.
come together to our time of confession, where we remember that in every week that goes by, there will have been those moments when we decide to live for ourselves rather than choosing to live for God. We remember those words from the prophet Isaiah, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each one of us has turned to our own way. So in a moment of quiet, we remember before God all of those ways this week where we've chosen to live for ourselves rather than for him. We remember them before God and we ask his forgiveness. And now let us return to the Lord our God and say to him, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. So when we do come before God and we say sorry for the things that we've done wrong, at the foot of the cross of Jesus, we find a love willing to forgive us everything that has gone before. And in John's letter, he tells us that this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So thankful for everything that Jesus has done on our behalf, we remember these words of absolution. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now our puppets, well, they're going to show us the writing on the wall. Oh, hello. It's me, Lionel, once again. I seem to have been waiting for ages for it to be my turn to have a part in the story. I was like a part that I can really get my teeth into. See what I did there? Do you get it? Get my teeth into? Oh, I'm wasted here. Anyway, I've had to put up with old Nebuchadnezzar thinking that he's the world's most powerful king with his weird dreams and that, then that silly little gold statue business. Well until he found out that there is a king even more powerful than him. And believe it or not, it's not even me, king of the beasts. No, it's God. Who knew? Well, old Nebuchadnezzar soon found that out. But that's a few years ago, and we have a new king of Babylon now, King Belshazzar. Let's see how he gets on. Oh, I say, I wonder what's going on here. It looks as if someone is having a do. Am I invited, I ask myself? The answer to your question is no, you're not. I am indeed King Belshazzar and you need to get back to your den where you belong. Now, shoo! Shoo? What does he think I am? A pigeon? Hasn't he noticed my giant teeth and massive claws? <laughs> Well, I don't want smelly lions around scaring the guests. Did I mention I'm having a party? A great big banquet? It's to celebrate me being me! Ha! It's going to be the biggest event of the year. I do love parties. I love being the centre of attention. Even though I'm always the centre of attention. Well, I am king after all. 
So there are a thousand noblemen coming, all with a plus one. There's going to be music and an all-you-can-eat buffet with pizza and prog cocktail crisps, my favourite, and as much wine as you can drink. I have only the very best wine, but that's just for me, of course. Everyone else can have the cheap stuff that tastes, um, very nice. <laughs> no, it doesn't. To be honest, it tastes of vinegar, but they won't notice the difference. Especially if I tell them that it costs a lot. They will all have to smile and tell me how delicious it is. Oh, hello. I think we may have some guests arriving now. I am very honoured to be a guest at your party, Your Majesty. May I introduce my wife to you? Come here, Rebecca. Come and meet His Majesty, King Belshazzar. I'm very pleased to meet you, King Belshazzar. You are all very welcome. Here, do have a goblet of wine. It's a very expensive little number I've had brought in especially for the occasion. Shh! Don't say anything! Don't drink it! It's disgusting! What was that? Did someone say something? Oh, uh, perhaps not. This wine is very, indeed very, uh, unusual. Yes, very distinctive. Expensive, you say? Very expensive. I thought you might like it. In fact, I have an idea. Many years ago, when my forefather, King Nebuchadnezzar, besieged Jerusalem and stole, I mean, uh, brought the silver and gold goblets from the temple for safekeeping, he locked them away in his trophy cabinet. Well, I think this would be the perfect occasion to bring them out of the trophy cabinet and use them. Servants, fetch the silver and gold goblets. Ha ha. Well, this will make my party extra special. What wonderful goblets they are. I wonder why I haven't thought of this before. It would make even the cheapest wine taste delectable. Which is just as well. So, let's have a toast. I give you the God of Silver. The, the God, God of Silver. silver. Hooray. 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 I give you the God of Gold. The, the God, God of gold. gold. Hooray. Hooray. I give you the God of Bronze. The, the God, God of, of Bronze. bronze. Hooray. <laughs> I give you the God of Iron! The, the God, God of, of iron. iron! Hooray! Hooray! Oh, this is fun! Uh, I give you... I give you... Oh, 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 what's that? Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, it's a hand! Oh, uh, whoa! Oh, what's it doing? It's writing, Your Majesty. Writing on the wall. I thought I was seeing things. I thought it was the wine. No, Your Majesty. It is definitely writing on the wall. Oh, I'm scared. My legs have gone all weak. I can feel my knees knocking together. But what is it writing? What does it say? It says... Mene... Mene, tekel, parsin. Well, 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 what does that mean? Is it a message? Servants, call for my sorcerers and astrologers. I need someone to come and explain it to me. If anyone can explain it to me, I will give him a purple robe and place a gold chain around his neck and I will make him the third highest ruler in Babylon as a reward. You call for me, your majesty. Look at this writing. What do you make of that? A hand just appeared out of nowhere. Uh, I wrote that. Um, your majesty, have you been drinking? No, I mean, yes. But I didn't write it, you impudent fuel, fool. A strange hand wrote it. 
Just tell me what it means. I'm sure I don't know what it means, Your Majesty. Call yourself a sorcerer. It's your job to know. Oh, get out! This is no use at all. My dear Belshazzar, what is the matter? You look as if you've seen a ghost. Oh, here's the Queen. Look at this. A hand just appeared out of nowhere and wrote these words on the wall. I was so scared that my knees knocked together and my legs gave way. What does it mean? That stupid sorcerer doesn't have the first idea. What am I going to do? Can you tell me what it means? No, Belshazzar, I cannot. But I know of a man who can. Many years ago, when your forefather Nebuchadnezzar was on the throne, there was a young man who could interpret dreams and explain all sorts of riddles and mysteries. He was appointed chief of magicians, sorcerers and astrologists. Would you like me to fetch him for you? Oh, yes, please. I'll try anything. That horrid hand has completely ruined my party. And everybody here has been completely useless. Oh, well, in fact, I think you should all go now. The party's over. Go on, leave me alone. You call for me, Your Majesty. Oh, yes. Um, I did. I understand you're able to interpret dreams and explain all sorts of riddles and mysteries. Well, so if you can explain to me what the writing on this wall means, I'll reward you by giving you a purple robe and place your gold chain around your neck and I'll make you the third highest ruler in Babylon. Your Majesty, you can keep your gifts and give your rewards to someone else. But I will certainly explain what these words mean to you. Go on, tell me. Your forefather, Nebuchadnezzar, was a very bad man. He was full of his own importance and cruel to his people. And because he would not mend his ways, the Most High God, the real God of heaven and earth, took away his kingdom until he changed his ways and became humble. After that, his kingdom was given back to him and he became a good ruler who worshipped the one true God. But you, King Belshazzar, do not worship the one true God, but instead praise the gods of silver and gold. However, these gods do not have a power over life and death. The words on the wall say, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Parsin. They mean that your days are numbered and that your reign has come to an end. You have been weighed on the scales and found wanting and that the kings of the Babylon will be divided between the Medes and the Persians. Um, uh, so tell me ex again exactly what that means, just so I can get it clear in my mind. Well, Your Majesty, God has judged you and found that you have done many evil deeds. Therefore, I regret to tell you, King Belshazzar, that because you have behaved badly in the eyes of God, you will lose your life and your kingdom will be taken over by Medes and Persians. Medes and Persians? No one can defeat the Babylonians. I think this god must have got his facts wrong. Even so, it's not your fault. We will just have to wait and see now whether this prophecy comes true. But because you have done as I asked, I insist that you accept my gift of a purple robe and a gold chain. Servants, and as promised, you will become the third highest ruler in all of Babylon. Have we got the gold chain? Excellent. Good job, servants. Excellent. You're looking fabulous, Daniel. I'm sure we'll have a long and prosperous time together. Well, that was a funny thing, wasn't it? But no sooner did Daniel tell him what was going to happen than it did. That very same night, King Belshazzar popped his clogs 
And that was indeed the end of the Babylonian Empire. Hmm. I wonder if the Medes, whoever they are, need lions. They must do. Everyone needs lions. And now our reading for this morning. The reading this morning is taken from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses 1 to 6 and 11 to 16. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is, Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. This is the word of the Lord. Our next song before Robert comes to speak to us is Our God is a Great Big God. Most places you go, there's always something written on a nearby wall. Most of the time, they're usually street signs fixed to the wall or posters advertising all sorts of things. 
some of the time the writing's about something happening locally like Save Our Park or it could be something national like Black Lives Matter. Sometimes when I was a bit younger a certain gentleman must have travelled all over the country writing Kilroy was here over any wall he could. There are times when someone's written something on the wall to show they love someone like capitals SB then a big heart shape then TL. There's a famous poem which has the line the moving finger writes and having written moves on. Maybe a reference to the things we do being written in an indelible record and may probably refer to the story we heard today of the banquet given by King Belshazzar in Babylon where the finger of God writes on the wall behind the feasting king the judgment on the crimes that he's done. So let's think about that story. Belshazzar, his wives and their guests were drinking from the sacred vessels which had just been looted from the temple in Jerusalem and to a lot of people that will be a terrible crime. As they drank, instead of recognising the one true God to whom the cups belong to, they praised their own gods of silver and gold, bronze, iron, wood and stone. Then the fingers of a human hand wrote on the plaster of the wall those words which Daniel read as many, many tekel of harsin. The literal meaning of the words are number, weight and division. The coin, known as a mina, was named after the counters used for calculating numbers. The coin, known in Israel as a half shekel, or in Babylon a tekel, was named from the word peris, meaning divided, and the plural of peris was parsin. So Daniel interpreted the message according to the literal meaning of their names. So, numbered I your days, weighed is your wickedness, and divided shall your kingdom be. God had judged Belshazzar and found him wanting. We might all know a little bit of that if you've ever had one of those school reports that said, tried hard, but could do a lot better. And hopefully we've tried a little harder over the next term or the next year. It was the king's misfortune that he died that very night before he had chance to do better and repent of his wickedness. His father before him, as Daniel said, had been judged and punished. But when he repented and praised God, he was forgiven and his kingdom restored back to him. God's writing on the wall of Belshazzar's palace is a little reminder to us and a reminder that carries on in the last book of the Bible, Revelation, where it tells that the dead, great and small, standing before the throne and books were opened and the dead were judged according to their works as recorded in the books. It's good to be reminded that God cares about the way his children treat each other and what we do to ourselves through misuse of, say, alcohol, food, other things. But then Paul, writing to the Ephesians, tells us, as we heard, that we've been called to the Christian life and to live our lives according to that call that Jesus gives to each one of us so that we can keep our own record straight. He tells us that in our lives we shall be humble and gentle, patient and have love for each other and to keep united with the Holy Spirit in the bond of peace. These are all qualities that should be shown in the Christian life, qualities that Daniel showed in his dealings with those around him and qualities we should show in the dealings with those around us. These qualities mean that we should get rid of our selfishness, our concern for ourselves, and replace it by selflessness, the willingness 
to do what we can for others with all that we have at our disposal. And of course, we've seen a lot of that during the present epidemic by people putting themselves out to help others, sometimes at a risk to their own health. When we put our own self to one side and Christ springs to life within our hearts and lives, then we come to the oneness with our Lord, which is a mark of the Christian and can be seen in our lives by other people. But the great thing is that if we do wander from the Christian path, God always holds open the possibility that we can repent and be forgiven and then go back to walking in the way he sets out for us. This story of Belshazzar's feast is a gentle warning to us that God is aware of and sometimes judges everything that we do to ourselves and we do for others. We know that our reward is eternal life with him and when on the last day our deeds are read from the books we can hope he will say to us welcome and come to eternal life my good and faithful servant. And so as we stand before God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit we affirm our faith together. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and who makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our next song before we come to our prayers is who breaks the power. Worthy is the Lamb who was 
As we begin, let's think about the words Paul wrote to the Romans. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace as we trust in him, so that we may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. We begin by praying for the world. In particular, we pray for Beirut in Lebanon after the explosion this week. We pray for those wounded and those who have lost loved ones. And we lift up in prayer the emergency services and the hospitals that are struggling to cope. We pray for the relief organisations such as Tear Fund as they serve to help communities to recover. And in our own country, we pray for those still affected by COVID-19. All those who now faced with lo local lockdowns. We pray for those who find lockdown hard with all the uncertainty and loneliness it might bring. And we pray that as this affects us locally, and as a church, that we would be given your wisdom to know how to reach out to those in need. And we pray that at this time, our faith in you would grow as we look to you for help. So that we would be united as a church family. And as we close, Father of all, you have given us your Son to be the Saviour of the world. Welcome us as your children into your kingdom to enjoy your presence now and forever. Amen. And the Collect for this, the ninth Sunday after Trinity. Gracious Father, revive your church in our day and make her holy, strong and faithful for your glory's sake, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And bringing all of our prayers together, we share in that prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final song for this morning is Shine, Jesus, Shine.
And so, as we go out into another week, I do pray that you will each know the presence of God in your lives day by day. And I do wish you every blessing that knowing our Lord Jesus Christ can bring. And as we end, why don't we share the words of the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.